All right, I'm a flight camp. Uh, still in the school. Uh, they, there's some motorcycles riding by, uh, so hopefully I come across uh, fairly well. Uh, often my words flow a little better if I move around. All right, so I'll be moving around a little bit, a uh, little more than usual, uh, maybe. Uh, this particular video probably should have been done before, before this one, um, but it's getting done now. And the inspiration for it uh, was that, um, you know how YouTube will give you some recommendations. They recommend that you look at this video based on your viewing uh, habits. Uh, and there was a video of Hicks and Gracie talking about the belt system and what you should expect from the belt system of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I noticed, however, there were a lot of thumbs up, as there should be, but there were 11 thumbs down. Now, of course, that happens. If you have 200 thumbs up, you probably have 11 th thumbs down, and for whatever reason, there's that many, you know, nutcase nuts running around. And they are nuts. But the fact of the matter is, is that what 11 people would have an issue with Hicks and Gracie describing, Super Gracie himself, right? Hickson describing what you should expect from each stage in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. When I saw that, I realized why I have such an issue with these practitioners of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Now, it's going to be in two parts. At the end of this particular video, I'm going to say something about the Gracies, okay? It's not what you think, but I'm going to say something about the Gracies. First, let's look at something about BJJ. I'm going to get you started. I'm going to get your blood going by saying one of the big problems is these so-called practitioners of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu do it more harm than good. Because many of them are simply idol worshippers. And they're worshipping the wrong people. Now as a Muslim, I don't worship people. But the fact of the matter is, is that they're looking up, let's say, for a better term. They're looking up to the wrong people. Right? They're taking the wrong people as their, um, as their uh, yardstick for excellence. And the people they should be looking at, they don't. First, most people are talking from a sports sense. They're talking from a sports sense. All right? And you can hear it. You can get it from them. There was a guy who got outraged because I said the last thing you should do in the street fight is deliberately pull guard. I said, that's the last thing you should do. In a street fight, pull guard. You don't want to, why pull guard when you get your brain stomped out by the guy's friend who you may be beaten? Okay? I mean, the fact of the matter is, this guy got upset. He starts to say, what do you know about Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu? Of course, I don't look, you know, I don't look like I should know anything about Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I mean, if this guy understood where Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu came from and what Brazilians look like, what many of them look like, he would know that he probably doesn't look like he should know anything about Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and perhaps I do. But I'll leave that alone. The fact of the matter is, is that he's wondering, what do I know about Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu? How could I possibly talk about Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu? When the fact of the matter is, I was trained in Judo quite likely before he was born. I started training when I was 12 in Judo. All right? Now, I'm 50, 54 now. That's 42 years ago. All right? So, I mean, you know, really, let, let's, let's understand who should be talking about Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and who shouldn't. And how many times we look at an individual. And because we have our own, like, kind of, you know, 18th century idea as to who has the right to talk about something, we make ourselves look stupid by doubting that someone other than what we think they should look like knows anything about what they're talking about. Okay? Okay. So here we go. Most people don't understand that at the core of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is not sport. It's self-defense. Every martial art, every martial art is, or at least the best martial arts, the most functional martial arts, are byproducts of the, envi of the environment that bore them. Every martial art that really works is a byproduct of the environment that gave birth to it. So, if you look at Krav Maga, for example, 
If you look at Krav Maga, why does Krav Maga look so much different than United States military combatives? Now, if you know what you're looking at, it does look different. Why does Krav Maga look different than United States military combatives? The reason is because Krav Maga, and I have my feelings about what goes on in the state called Israel. As a Muslim, I have my feelings about that, but that's something else. We're talking strictly about self-defense and the development of Krav Maga and other martial arts. But the reason Krav Maga looks so much different than the military combatives of the United States is because Krav Maga was born from everyday, re everyday action or everyday interaction with the perceived enemy. Let me repeat that. Krav Maga looks so much different than the United States military combatives because Krav Maga was born out of an environment where the people who use it, the military, the Israeli military, had every day, essentially every day, interaction with the perceived enemy. So in the end, there was a practicality. There is a practicality to Krav Maga. The United States combatives, military combatives, there is no such thing. Sure, there is some hand-to-hand -hand a person has gone, gone through in the military with, with the enemy, but it's rare. Usually it's, it's not really you occupying or your enemy and you living so close together for a long period of time and interacting in this, in this kind of way. Now had uh, the Iraqis and the United States and, and American uh, soldiers interacted continuously if a self-defense system was based on a hand-to-hand, hand-to-hand -hand, hand -hand violent interactions with Iraqis, then you would see, you would see, or what they call insurgents, then you would see that the whole military combative program of the United States had to be and would be revamped. But since the United States it does not have that everyday interaction with the perceived enemy, the result then, the result then, it does not have the practicality of Krav Maga. So now if we look at any martial art, any real functional martial art, any real functional martial art actually is born from a particular environment. And if you look at that environment, you know why those particular nuances in that martial art is in that martial art. So if you look at Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu was born from what? In what? It was born in an environment in Brazil where people are impoverished, people don't have a great deal of education, people are often desperate for even some of the small things, for things we take, we take for granted, and ultimately there was much hand-to-hand -hand fighting. It was nothing to be challenged in the street. It was nothing to have to fight for your life. It was nothing for someone to have a knife, to have a blade or something like that and find you empty-handed. Or for you to have a blade and someone else have a blade and you're knife fighting. There was nothing uh, that was unusual about that in a day-to-day, -day, on a day-to-day -day basis. Therefore, the essence of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is not sport. It is self-defense. It is self-defense. Today there are people who are only thinking about sport. Medals and medals and medals and medals and medals. And you will see something at the end of this video really getting into that idea of having medals now make someone a good uh, a, a practitioner of self-defense, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. It's not true. What Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is now is not what it was meant to be. When I first started training, uh, I, I, was, uh, I loved wrestling, and there was a friend of mine who was a brown belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu with a reputable instructor whose lineage goes back to Hilio. Uh, he was uh, a black belt. This particular gentleman was a black belt with Horion. Now, the thing is, is that a friend of mine wanted to learn some takedowns, and that's not unusual. 
Murillo, Bustamante, Mario Spiri, American top team, they really sell them. People like Daryl Golar, Kevin Jackson, uh, All-American wrestlers, freestyle Kevin Jackson, I believe. And I know Daryl Golar was Greco-Roman. They summoned them to Brazil to help them with their takedowns when uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu fighters uh, started competing uh, in a uh, Valley Hudo contest. So it wasn't unusual for a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu uh, uh, person to come and ask me to help him with his takedowns. I decided, okay, I'll help you with your takedowns. And what happened was he told his instructor that he was learning takedowns, and his instructor invited me to come to uh, their school. I went to their school, and I started to roll a little bit. I already had a karate gi. I uh, started to roll a little bit. Uh, and the gentleman, after about two months, he says, you know something? I think you are a high-level blue belt based on your wrestling, based on how well you pick up things, you know, the result of your wrestling. After about four months, he awarded me the purple belt. We actually didn't fall out, but there was a disagreement over how much time he was spending teaching the guard, and I decided to, rather than be a distraction, I just decided to leave that school. But the fact of the matter is, is that I got a great deal out of looking and seeing how someone who is in direct lineage to Helio actually teaches Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Because the first thing they taught you when you walked in the door wasn't sport jiu-jitsu. It was how to defend yourself against the most common attacks. Different punches, the knife, um, uh, sticks, bats. Now there are some people today that may think that's unusual. But think about this. Maybe people forgot. But it was Helio Gracie's idea that if you could defend yourself adequately, adequately against the most common attacks, you should be pushed forward for a blue belt. That's right. That's what Helio believed. Helio Gracie believed that if you could adequately defend yourself, because at the core of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu was self-defense, not sport. He believed that if you could adequately defend yourself, then you should be not necessarily just awarded and given a blue belt, but you should be sped up in your progress towards a blue belt, even if you didn't know all 80 or 88 techniques that took you from white to blue. Why? Because the onus of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu was to defend yourself. Today, all we hear about is sport. All we think about is sport. When I'm hearing a particular person talk or reading what somebody says on a, in one of our forums, you would get the gist that he's talking about sport. There was an individual that when I told him that falling on his back deliberately, if you have another choice, to deliberately falling and pulling guard, all right, when you could get a cross size or a knee on belly or a full mount or a scarf hold, when I told him that, when I said that, he just got, he just went crazy. I mean, you, he, you know, I was at work, I couldn't even comment, I couldn't even get back to him as fast as he was getting, at, you know, just getting to the forums. Oh, what are your credentials? Oh, 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 right? So this is what he's doing. And then he said, you must not understand why you pull guard. You pull guard because you have to. Okay, I got that. But then he said, you pull guard and then you go for a submission. I don't get that. Why? Because this gentleman is thinking in terms, he's thinking in terms of sport. You're getting a submission, so you are looking for the man to tap. In a street fight, you're trying to get a submission so the man will tap, not snap. Because in actuality, if you're training in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, when you're training chokes, what are you training? Are you training really to get a tap? No. If you're training in jiu-jitsu, what are you really learning when you're learning a choke? You're learning to kill someone. That's what you're learning to do. You're really learning to kill someone. Before you kill them in sport, they have the option to tap. If you allow them in a street fight to tap, then you have the option to honor that tap. But in essence, when you are working on a choke, in Nawaza, in Judah, or in Ju Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, when you are working on a choke, you are in essence learning how to kill someone. The fact of the matter is that when you were learning to do an armbar, you were learning to do what? 
Now, you can get someone to tap in a sport, in the sport arena. In a street fight, you can honor a tap. If the person is going to tap, you can choose whether to honor it. But if you were learning an arm bar, aren't you learning to break that arm? Aren't you learning to break a neck? Aren't you learning to choke someone out? Aren't you learning to snap someone's knee? That's in essence what you were learning. Why? Because at the essence of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu was self-defense. But you have people saying that in a street fight, the onus on them pulling guard is to get a submission, to get somebody to do that in a street fight. And this gentleman who really thought he had it down said that in a comment to me in our forums. You obviously don't know what you're talking about. You pull guard so you can get a submission. You look for a submission. What I tried to explain to him was if you must pull guard, you're first. Your first concern should be to protect yourself from getting stomped or beat up or punched in that guard. And your second concern should be to get up onto your feet. If you can't do that, then at least to a dominant position. Which brings me to another issue. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, the way it was meant to be, the guard is the least dominant position. It's the least dominant position. And the best jiu-jitsu players are trying, or best jiu-jitsu fighters, are trying to get from the guard to a more dominant position, scarf hold, the ultimate dominant position, full mount, uh, cross sides. That's what they are trying to do. Now this has become so clear, so clear, that recently Hicks and Gracie has started the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Global, I think, Federation, or Jiu-Jitsu uh, BJJ Global Federation, or Global, or, or Federation Global. But there are several things he's going to change. One is he says people stall too much. People stall too much because they want to win the medal. So there's going to be a time limit where people have to move on and attempt a submission or try to get to a more dominant position. He is going to deduct points for people who stall. He is going to give points for people who fight for positions, who get better positions. Not necessarily just go for a submission, go for a submission, but go from one position to a more dominant position. And he said this, and I quote, the reason why Hickson's organization is going to give more points, award more points for getting to a dominant position, a top position, a scarf hold, a full mount, a cross sides, a knee on belly. The reason why he's going to do that, he said, is because the onus of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is to get to a position where you can rain down punches. I repeat, Hickson said, one reason why they're going to give points for people getting better positions coming out of the guard and into a more dominant position on top is because the focus of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu originally was to get in a dominant position that will enable you to throw down punches to strike your opponent. And you can only do this maximally from a scarf hold, full mount, cross sides, knee on belly. All right? This was Hickson. But the biggest eye opener for you, maybe, but not for me, is that he is going to penalize people who pull guard when they have another option. Hickson and his organization is turning Brazilian Jiu Jitsu on his, on his head. He is going, or sport Brazilian Jiu Jitsu on his head. Why? Because he's going to award points for people going from one position to a more dominant position. He's going to award points for people going for submissions and constantly attacking, even if they get it or not. He's going to award points, half point, one point, I'm not sure, but award points for people even attempting submissions. He's going to, he's going to, set, he's going to um, take points away. Take points away for people who stall, for people who hold a lapel or just sit there, people who just sit in the guard or don't try to pass the guard but sit inside someone's guard. He is, he is going to uh, uh, deduct points for people who stall. And he is also going to deduct points from people, deduct points from people who pull guard when they can get a more dominant position on top. Okay? This is Hicks and Gracie. Why? Because the onus of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu was not to get into the guard and stay into the guard. It is, yes, we, you work in the guard, but you work in the guard based on getting yourself up, get, uh, sweeping the individual, keeping from being punched, these kind of things. It is 
you, they are taught the guard because you may end up on your back. It is not something that you should be saying in a street situation. And now according to Hickson, in a sports situation, I am going to pull guard because this is where I fight best, or I'm going to pull guard because I'm lazy, or I'm going to put guard, pull guard because I just want to see how good I am in the guard, or something like this. To think that the guard is a dominant position, according to the Gracies, it is certainly not true. You should be able to function on your back, be comfortable, learn how to breathe on your back, yes. But for people who think somehow that me saying that the last thing you should do in a street fight is pull guard, for them to think that that is wrong, absolutely, that is, that is absolutely wrong for them to think so, because common sense would tell them so. All right? So, when you look at Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, you need to understand what the origin was of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. The origin of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu people was as a martial art that was a product of its environment, a product of its environment which was exceedingly and still is in many ways extremely violent, all right? Because of that, because of that, the onus on even pulling guard if you must or falling into your falling in and pulling a person into your guard because you can't get to a better position at that moment, the onus of being in the guard is to protect yourself while you're in the guard, to get up out of that guard into a more dominant position or up on your feet, all right? Why? Because the focus of the original Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu was self-defense and not sport. And we need to understand that. Next, there are people who talk about the Gracies. There are people who have been bad-mouthing Hoist. There are people who I think have even bad-mouthed Hickson. And these are people who may train with other people. Maybe the Eddie Bravos of the world. Maybe, you know, whoever. All right, people worship Joe Rogan, or, you know, I mean, these kind of things. Let me say something to you. Let me say something to every one of you, okay? Eddie Bravo and Joe Rogan aren't fighting people that weigh 100 pounds more than them, okay? They're not. They're not. They could not carry Hickson, Horian, or Hoyce's dirty socks, okay? The fact that there are young people today who have the gall, who have the nerve, all right? I mean, who are brain damaged enough to look at a hoist and say, yeah, that guy this, that guy that. One guy said hoist a hypocrite. Well, yes, hoist probably likes one guy, but he likes another guy. He probably defends one guy, doesn't defend the other guy. But the fact of the matter is, hoist has that right. Hoist Gracie is not a member of the clergy. Hickson is not a member of the clergy, all right? Horian is never, not a member of the clergy, all right? These are people who did in their time to prove the superiority or to, pre, to prove the effectiveness of their art and the teaching of their father. These people have done things in their prime that you people wouldn't dream of doing, never did, and you couldn't be poured into the situations that those men walked into voluntarily. Now, I will say this, that I am a wrestler. My base is wrestling. My training in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is more now. I train in it now with some people. We, you know, we roll and we work on BJJ. But the fact of the matter is, the fact of the matter is, at my core, I am a wrestler with a brown belt in judo. But I will tell you this. I have nothing but respect for Hoist Gracie, for Hickson Gracie, for Helio Gracie, for Horion Gracie, I have nothing but respect for those Gracies. And there is no modern Gracie today. There are none of you little jack leg, BJJ, purple belts, brown belts, and black belts who should have the nerve to sit around and say, well, Hoist Gracie this, or Hickson Gracie that. Let me tell you something. These people have fought people who weighed as much as 100 pounds more. As much as 100 pounds more than them and fought them bare knuckle in order to prove or in order to back up what they have said. You haven't done it. You wouldn't do it. And you probably don't know anybody who would do it or has done it. Okay? You owe the Gracies. You owe Hickson. You owe Horion. You owe Hoyce. That's right, you do. 
You're idol worshiping of Joe Rogan. You're idol worshiping of Eddie Bravo. All that nonsense, let me tell you, and I'll tell you again, Eddie Bravo's not in MMA, baby. Okay? Joe Rogan's not in MMA, baby. All right? You couldn't pour these cats in MMA. You couldn't pour these cats into the places that hoist Gracie or pour these places, these guys, into the places that uh, Hicks and Gracie has been in. Do not ever, ever, ever forget that. I owe it. I owe debt of gratitude to Hickson. I owe a debt of gratitude to Hoist. Why? For showing, just showing that when you believe that your art, when you believe that you yourself, when you believe that your methods are top notch and can overcome almost unseeming or almost unfathomable obstacles, mano a mano, then the least you can do is put up or shut up. So, those people who are talking about sport, it's not about sport. It's always been about self-defense. That's what it's been about, self-defense. If you do not understand the self-defense aspects of BJJ, you don't understand BJJ. Okay? Horion, Hickson, Hoist, whatever issues you may have with them, let me say this and say this for one last time. Every martial artist who runs their mouth continually, all the time, nonstop, and when they're faced with a challenge, they back down from it, and they're in their prime, in their 20s, in their 30s, let me tell you something right now. Those people need to look at those Gracies because they put up, and or they, they put up, they walk the walk, and they talk the talk. Everybody needs to look at that, no matter what martial art there is. Everybody needs to look at that and see that's how you do it, if you're going to do it at all. Uma Fight Camp, Safe Harmon. Train hard, train smart. See you next video. We're only wasting time by training some kind of techniques. We're going to work only to get medals. And when you get your, your butt kick on the street, you're going to you're going to regret to have only those ineffective movements training. <laughs> I just I hope somewhere out there when somebody gets beat up after meddling somewhere, you just go, I told you so. Yes. I tried to tell you guys. You pulled guard in the streets. just doesn't work. Your medal's not going to work now. <laughs> that should be your tagline. Again, they stall, they hold, so because their vision is the medal. And that if, not the street effectiveness. Yes, yeah, so the efficiency right. to get the medal is different than effectiveness in real life. So, and I see a big need because m maybe at least six or seven percent of the black belts which come into my seminars, they have no understanding of self-defense and some other basic related moves. So, and one point you have to choose if you want to compete in an event which going to make you feel better on the street to handle life, or you want to compete in a tournament who will make you very efficient to get the medal, but I mean, you get your ass, your ass kicked any time on, on the street, so that's not worth it. From, from your coaching, teaching experience, what is the hardest belt move? Is it blue to purple, purple to is brown? The, is to get the blue belt. Really? Yeah, because... Why the, is that? Because, you know, from white belt, you have no idea, and you start to, to create your reflexes, your understanding. For you to become a blue belt, you definitely have to understand the whole game. You already know how to, to mount, you already know the chokes, you already know the arm locks, you already know the escapes, you already feel the pressure, you already know how to handle and last longer on the training, how to breathe. So you already become a jiu-jitsu animal as a blue belt. And white belt, you nothing, you just start it. And then when you become a blue belt, you know the whole game. You just don't have the practice, the reflexes. So as once you are blue belt, just the maintenance will lead you to the black belt. But I mean, the way people compete today, using jiu-jitsu, do you like it or do you feel like it could be better or it could be different? Jiu-jitsu is an art of self-defense, not for fighting. Not I fight to prove that. I don't lose, I can't lose to a bigger opponent. So my father didn't create fighters, he built teachers.
I guess what I mean is when you look around today and you see, like, let's say, like the Meow Brothers and they're doing the Barambolo and the back takes and the 50-50 guard, when you look at that, you come from the old school. How do you feel about that kind, those kinds of adaptations? Martial art in general is not for competition. It's for defend yourself in a street fight situation. Hmm. If it doesn't work in a street fight, sorry, I won't teach my students. So are grapplers today better or worse? How do you view the guys out there today competing? I'm against competition, tournament, point system. How do you get better then? You get better by training. Karate, Taekwondo, they were not made to compete, to score a point. It became a tag game. Karate, Taekwondo, all the martial arts were made to defend yourself in a street fight situation by putting them to adding um, point system and rules and, and uh, uh, weight division. So that means if somebody pinch your girlfriend on, behind, on her behind, you're going to go say, hey, honey, hold on, I'll take care of this. Excuse me, how much do you weigh? What's your belt? Really? Sorry, honey, I can't fight this guy because he's not on my division. He's not on my belt. It doesn't work that way. And coincidentally, I've never seen a Barambolo work at a high level in MMA. Do you think that's coincidence? The fact that you can see it work all the time at IBJJF tournaments, you almost never see it in like a Bellator or UFC. It doesn't, it doesn't work. It doesn't, if it, that's what I'm saying. If, it, if, I, if I can't use, if I can't use in a street fight situation to defend myself, it's not gonna work in a fight, forget it. I won't teach my students.